All right, we're going to take a look at innate versus learned behavior, and we're going to use several examples to help us understand this. Innate is stuff that is kind of you're born with. It's that nature idea. So your abilities to do certain things when you're born, independently of the environmental complex. Um, the learned behaviors obviously are things that you learn. There are things that if you don't get exposed to, if you wanted to do some crazy experiments and just raise human babies in complete isolation, which would be really unethical, um, but we do, we do this with all kinds of other animals as well too. We can learn about what kinds of behaviors are actually innate and what kinds are learned. Crying, for example, would be an example of a, an innate behavior. Learning would be language. Okay. So if we look at some specific examples of innate behavior, things that are kind of programmed into the DNA, one such thing is called a taxis, and it's the movement away or towards a uh, directional stimulus. So for example, if you have maggots, for example, they tend to move away from light. Oops, here we go. Let's see that again. So maggots tend to move away from light. And then you can think about why these innate behaviors would exist. If you're a maggot and you've just been laid on a freshly dead corpse, it would be in your advantage to move away from the light for several reasons because you'll probably be moving deeper into the body for more access to nutrients and you'd be avoiding predators. So that's one example of a kind of innate behavior. Then in this specific example, we're talking about a phototaxis movie away or towards light. Another type of innate behavior, something called kinesis. Kinesis is non-directional. It just it, kinesis is a response to a non-directional stimulus in which the rate of some kind of activity or movement will increase or decrease. And this happens with wood lice, for example. In dry areas, they don't move around so much, but in humid areas, they tend to be a lot more active. And there's different physiological reasons for that, but overall you can assume that this case will actually help to increase their survival. Okay, well now we look at learned behavior. Learned behavior is also good. Um, some animals exhibit traits that seem like they're either innate or learned, but actually are a combination of both. But this is a very famous example of Pavlov's dogs, and people have used it as analogies for all kinds of different things. But the point is that learning can also increase your chance of survival. So we're going to use this famous example here. The example is pretty intuitive to understand, but there's some vocabulary that identifies different things. And so when you're doing a scientific experiment, even if something looks like it's very intuitive, you have to be able to explain it and break it down using independent, dependent variables and controlling your experiment really well. So we understand that dogs start drooling when they see or smell food, right? There you go. And there's the saliva. The sight or taste of the meat is called the stimulus. In this case, it's the unconditioned stimulus. We haven't taught the dog to do anything. The dog just naturally, when smelling food or in the presence of food, will start to salivate. So the sight or taste of the meat is called the unconditioned stimulus. And then the response, which is the saliva being secreted, is called the unconditioned response. So this stuff that happens over here is all nothing that we've actually taught the dog. Now Pavlov came along and he started ringing a bell before he gave the dog food, okay? And so what he's done is he's kind of added to the stimulus. And after a while, the dogs have learned a behavior and now whenever they hear the bell ringing, they start to salivate automatically, almost as if they're expecting food. So it's pretty neat, right? Animals can learn, humans can learn. And so now we give these different things uh, instead of being unconditioned now, we say the sound of the bell is called the conditioned stimulus and the secretion of saliva, sorry, it's slightly covered up here, the bell is still ringing. If you can't hear it, it's because you don't believe in Santa. The secretion of saliva before the sight of meat is called the conditioned response. This is a learned behavior. And this is an example of classical conditioning. An alteration in the behavior of an animal as a result of the association of an external stimuli. In this case, the ringing of the bell is the external stimulus. Finally, let's take a look at bird's song as an example. So birds sing beautiful songs. There is a genetic component in all birds because any birds that are raised in isolation are still able to sing. They have a bird song. You put them in a in a cage, have them never interact with other birds, and they'll still be able to sing a song. 
Genetically and instinctively, their songs are relatively simple, but they can actually expand their songs by being exposed to other birds or being quote unquote taught by other birds. And so there are all kinds of examples of this, and there's some really impressive things you can find on YouTube. If you search for, I think it's David Attenborough, search for the lyre bird, L Y R E bird, and uh, you're going to see that this bird can mimic all kinds of sounds, including cell phones and more impressively, uh, chainsaws and cameras that's right it's a, like a shutter a shutter sound and it sounds exactly like the real thing so in that environment they were probably exposed to people coming over to chop down trees and things like that so that's a little bit about that's what the lyre bird looks like i think um that's a little bit about innate versus learned behavior hope that was helpful